Hello everyone, my name is Shane Jarman, and my talk today will be an intro to server-side rendering with React. Now before I begin, we'll go, to go through a slight agenda. First I'll go into like what I mean by rendering, like what exactly is rendering in general. Then we'll go into a client-side React, like how when you request an application that's loaded on the client side, what exactly that process is, how does that happen, what happens on the browser, what happens on the server, and we'll go into seeing what happens on the server side. And then we'll, this is like the discussion of the differences between the two, the use cases for both, and then a kind of a live demo so you can see the difference yourselves. So, uh, to begin, what is rendering? What, when we talk about rendering, kind of in this case, we're talking about uh, where is kind of the HTML created? So when we're thinking about uh, are the React components that we've been working with recently, uh, or if you work in Angular, HTML is created in the browser by JavaScript. You send over a single div tag, and when the scripts load, they build up that document inside the script tag based on whatever div ID you target. So all the work is done on the client side. Your server just sends some JavaScript, and it sends a very, a very empty page over to the client, and they do all the work on their side. Server side is where the HTML is actually created on the server. We're familiar with this. We've all worked with uh, Nunchucks and Express. When we set the app engine equal to nunchucks.render, the, uh, the render, when you set, send the document back with res render, the document is then rendered in, the, it takes the, uh, I believe it takes the nunchucks template, puts it inside the HTML, and creates it all for you, then sends it off a fully created HTML document. So your client, when, they, when the client, when the browser requests it, it's already pretty much loaded, it's all ready to go, there's no waiting. Um, so React can do both, and that's what's really cool about React. It's the first kind of isomorphic application. If you have the same, if you are using Node, and if you're sending JavaScript over to the browser, it can do it. It doesn't care. You can do it either way. You can render it on the browser, or you can render it in the server, which is really cool, and uh, I think an underappreciated thing about React. And so here's the kind of how you would do it both ways. Uh, the traditional, you see React on render, you target the app. So when, when the JavaScript runs, it targets, you get element by ID, you're targeting that specific app, and then you're rendering your app into that little div. And uh, on the server, it's a little different. You just render your app to string, and then you uh, kind of put that string inside of that app that was that the same app that would have been targeted this way. You just build it inside that string. That's all built. It's rendered to string, ready to go. You send it off to the client. So uh, our example page today we're we'll working with is a bit of a mashup between puppy book and the Facebook like. So uh, pup versus pup. You can choose your favorite puppy. You like it. It's kind of a, it just kind of like a, just a quick example page to see the difference between the two types of rendering, because we're going to render this page both ways. Uh, now, so if we're going to go to pupfirstpup.com, we want to the, get the home page, we want to see the puppies, we want to have a great time. So we send a get request to the server, the server sends back index.html. This is index.html. It's not what you wanted to see. It's just a div. That's it. You don't see anything. That, but the index.html requ requires two very specific things. It requires the style sheet, and it, and it requires our friend the bundle.js if you're using Webpack. So it's going to build the bundle, and you know it's going to request the bundle, but not until you see this initial page. It'll because it's deferred. It'll load, it'll load that single div first, and then it'll go get everything that it needs. So if we zoom out, because there's a lot of things going on when you first load a React, uh, a React page, we're going to zoom out here, and you see your initial GET request. You get index.html. Then we're going to, and as it reads index.html, you see that you need to get the bundle, and you need to get the style sheet. So it's, your browser sends another request to the server. You get those things, you wait. Bundle's big. Uh, the bundle that I use for this one is 25,000 lines of code for a very simple app. I don't think it would grow, this, you know, it's not gonna grow exponentially. It'll probably, because you have most of the frameworks and everything you need done. But still, 25,000 loads is, 25,000 lines is a lot of code. It takes time to send it, it takes time to render, to uh, parse it, and it takes time to run it. it though you don't really run everything. So what the thing we're waiting for is mostly uh, react-dom.render. When that calls, it creates pretty much everything that you want to see. Or does it? So we're, in this case, we're loading just the header here. And so why that is is because in the component did mount, we're requesting our puppies from the server. So that doesn't happen until the page renders. So now we, the component did mount, we get API puppies, send back all the data that we need. Oh wait, oh. Almost got the puppies. Now we've rendered all of this stuff, but we still need the images because the images are built now, and now they're there. Now the browser knows exactly where to go find the images. So we spend another request to the server to get the images, and now finally, here we are, exactly what we wanted to see. When you first load a React app, React app it's, a first, it's a long time to the first meaningful paint, which is defined as pretty much the first time the user sees what they came to the website to see what they wanted to see. And uh, whereas if we, uh, 
Compare this to server side. The server does a little bit more work, so that request takes a little bit longer. But for the client, it's much nicer. It, it loads much zippier. When you, on your first load, you get everything you need pretty much right there. So you send a GET request to the server. The server says, hey, I have a GET request. Uh, so it's looking, it usually looks to where, where your GET request is if you're using a React router. And it sets the initial state to what you want it to be. So the server can set the initial state in the Redux store if you're using Redux or the React state. And then the server renders the HTML. So the server runs through, your, it create, turns your component into you know, HTML and sends it back over to the client. So then we have our page mostly loaded when we first get it. We have a request for the bundle, we have a request for style, and we have the request to images. All those three can concurrently go. So as soon as your images come back, you have your puppies. No waiting for the bundle to do all its crazy things. Like these requests are all going. And if the bundle takes a long time, the images can come back quickly. And then when the bundle comes, we React DOM render again, because certain things can only be done on, in the browser because of the window element, and you want to say, at event listeners, and React does a cool thing where it checks the state to make sure your current state here is the same as the state on the server, and if it's not, it gets angry and throws errors. So, um, some considerations to doing server-side or client-side rendering. Uh, you have a faster initial page load um, on server-side, but uh, sometimes, it depends, it obviously varies for certain things, depending on how much data you need and depending on what exactly is going on. Sometimes client can, side can be faster, but generally server side is uh, better for SEO, because not every, web crawlers, I think, and the search indexing usually can handle the JavaScript, but it's a little safer to have the HTML there so they know what they're looking for. Um, it's, client side is easier to manage, I guess. You don't have to keep all this stuff in two places and kind of keep track of it all. It gets to be a little painful. And uh, once, after your first request, generally in React, like you're just, the, it's very small changes, so you don't really, uh, th there's not much advantages past the first page load. Um, we'll skip over this, I want to make sure I get on time, and we can go to the live demo. So, um, let me just get out of here, and I will pull up the example page. And here we can see the server, and I'm showing the, uh, this, is the this is the server, um, for the server side rendering. So the page is clear right now. So if we go to client side, we're gonna load this page. It's pretty quick. You can see everything important. It checks the, gets the props, it renders, component mounts, gets the updated props, renders again. So that's the process here. But if we compare that to server side, and we go to the console here, and we load it, or go to server, it loads a little quicker. It's hard to see sometimes, but you can see over here in our get request, uh, it gives the, it give the initial state is set here with the data that we wanted because the data is already on the server so it can easily give it to the uh, React component. And then it renders it there. Then we grab the state off the window, which is unique because you have to send the state and set the state on the window so React can compare the two of them. And then our props, the same thing. We render component did mount and we don't have to request anything else because everything's already been given to us. And uh, so we can run some tests here to see if server-side rendering really is faster. And uh, so if we go to the network tab here, we can kind of see the, re see the requests, or to see the cache is disabled. So we refresh here, refresh here. It really doesn't, it looks the same. You can see the images flash slightly. But on the client side, it's a little different. We go to the network tab here, we see it flashes every time because it's building it every time. You're sending index HTML and it's building it from scratch every single time. So you can see the flashing there, whereas like really no flashing here. And you can see all the requests are done here within 29 milliseconds, or 29 ms. And then here, it takes a little longer to get everything that it needs with 175. So server side, much quicker to first paint. And you can see, this is not so bad on, on a pretty fast computer, on a pretty fast internet network. But if we, what's cool about uh, uh, the Chrome DevTools is you can throttle your connection. So if we wanted to load this on a phone, mobile, say, you know, we're out of 4G data, we're using, but we still have good 3G data, so we're gonna load the page server side with our good 3G data, 3G data, and we're gonna load it client side with our good 3G data. So we're throttling the connection, we're gonna refresh client side here, or let's do server side first. So we'll refresh here, takes a little longer, it still loads pretty quick, it's zippy, you know, you see all your content you wanna see, you see what you came for, the meaningful first paint is quick. Now, if we switch to client side, Da -na -na, loading the bundle, loading the bundle, loading the bundle. It takes a long time. It takes a long time to see what you wanted to see. You don't have a meaningful first paint. Your user experience isn't quite as good with client side on a slow connection because we, don't, we aren't always all on our computers 
with a great Wi-Fi and a fast computer. Sometimes we're on our phones, some phones are newer than others, some browsers have a lot of things going on. So server-side, if you want a great first load, React lets you send your first page server-side and continue all the other work on the client side. And that's why I think uh, server-side rendering is very cool and uh, you should consider doing it. But make sure you get your app to work first. It's, it's not somewhat of a luxury, uh, I, I, to be honest. But uh, thank you. It was great uh, talking to you guys.